Yeah, hi there. These comments, I'm going to just use your initials, uh, OB, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. You have completed independent speaking practice test number three. So this question is, upon your death, what valuable object or material possession would you consider giving to a friend or family member? Why would you want your friend or family member to inherit this object? That is a question. I was hoping if I can achieve a score of 22 or 23 out of 30, and give me some out of First of all, when you say the word 30, you have to put the tongue between your teeth and say 30. So I was hoping I could get 21 or 22 points out of 30. Guys, tell me what I should do and give me a score. All right. And the question is, when a person dies, family members often inherit the material possessions of the deceased loved one. Upon your death, what valuable object or material possession do you have that you would consider giving to a family member or friend? All right. Why would you want the family member or friend to inherit this object? Okay, let me listen to the whole thing without stopping first, right? That way I can kind of focus on the three parts of your response, your introduction, the body, and maybe the conclusion if you have one. And the response, the valuable object or material possession I do have that I would consider giving to a family member or my friend. So, in a number of reasons, that's my diary. Because in my diary, there will be my life story. For example, a few years ago, I posted a topic, a uh, saying from my diary into the Facebook and many students and many people like that and the topic was how a person can grow bigger in a poor environment and I'm sure that my family would like to and it can be a good inherit for them. The second reason I wrote some of my advices there like an advice of mine is if you want to achieve your goals you have to traverse from a print called challenges and create an attitude never give up and my diary do lots of very good advices for them that they will read that that how obey the law uh, created that and how obey the law they struggle with those difficulties and arduous issues all right so let's go back to the beginning Object or material possession I do have that I would consider giving to a friend to inherit this object. And they respond, the valuable object or material possession. First of all, with the word valuable, you're mispronouncing that word. You have to pronounce the V, I think more clearly, valuable. And then the stress is on the first syllable, valuable. I do have that I would consider giving to a family member or my friend. So, in a number of reasons, that's my diary. I wouldn't say for a number of reasons. So, if you want to score higher than 21 or 22 points, you have to be more specifically focused with your topic statement. So, ask yourself, what are two supporting points? Why is it you'd like to give your diary to a family member? Think of two reasons. You, you have probably 20 reasons, of course, right? But just think about two reasons for the sake of a 45 second response, and then you can mention those in the beginning of your response. Then you can repeat and rephrase those ideas. Because in my diary, there will be my life story. For example, a few years ago, I posted a topic uh, saying... For but you still haven't even said who you want to give it to. You can't just say family. The question is asking you for a friend or family member. So do you want your brother to have this diary? Do you want your sister? Do you want your son or your daughter? Your wife, your cousin, your parents? Specifically who would you want to give the diary to and why do you think it would be a benefit to this specific person? So if you want to score higher on the TOEFL IBT speaking, you have to really specifically address whatever the speaking task is. I dive into the Facebook and many students and many people like that. And the topic was how a person can grow bigger in a poor environment. And I'm sure that my family would like to, and it can be a good inherit for them. 
It can be a good inheritance. So again, you want to eliminate any language use problems. Inherit is used as a verb. If you want to use it as a noun, you have to put A-N-C-E on the end. So inheritance. The second reason I wrote some of my advice is there. But you might say secondly, I also want my friend or family member to have this diary because... So if you, if you say it like that, you're connecting and making the purpose of your second supporting point clear as it relates to the speaking task, right? So I'd like you to take a look at speaking lesson two and speaking lesson number seven. Like, right. the advice of mine is, if you want to achieve your goals, you have to traverse from a bridge called challenges and create an attitude, never give up. My diary, there are lots of... If you, you, who are you talking to here? I don't think you want to directly talk to the audience. You need to frame your perspective around your friend. So if my friend, blah, 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 or if my family member does this, blah, blah, blah. So I would focus more on the third person singular, not the second person singular point of view. Very good. Advice is for them that... Advice is an uncount noun, which means we don't make advices. You have to say advice. Some advice, you could say pieces of advice if you want to make it countable. You could do that. They will read that, that how Obedullah uh, created that and how Obedullah just struggled with those difficulties and arduous issues. I don't know what happened at the end. It was a disaster. What you did at the end, you, you got kind of sidetracked and went in all these different directions. You didn't really connect things. So the question here is, and you asked me specifically in the email, you say, I was hoping if I can achieve a score of 21 or 22 out of 30, give me some advice. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So first of all, what is your score, right? So I think a lot of problems with topic development. You're not connecting ideas together to a common theme because you don't really have a f sharply focused topic statement in the beginning. So in order to score higher, you have to be more organized. I gave you some suggestions. Speaking lesson two, speaking lesson number seven. Those are two good lessons to help you with your organization. Uh, also, language use. If you want to score higher, you have to eliminate the problems you're having with language use. That means words like advice. Advice is an uncount noun. Don't put poor OS endings on uncount nouns. So you have to improve your language use. That means that you need to work a little bit more, I think, in the pronunciation, not the, the grammar part of my course. You, need to, you actually need to do some practice. So keep working in that area. Focus on the more complex type sentence structures. For example, focus on the lessons that talk about sentence variety, noun clauses, adjective clauses, adverb clauses, compound sentences. When you go to the grammar part of my course, study those lessons with those titles. Delivery. The very end of your response, whatever you were saying, I couldn't quite understand, so you have a lot of problems with your delivery. You have to eliminate. If you want to score higher, you must eliminate these problems with your delivery, with your language use, and your topic development. Your score here, I'm going to put you at about 2.16 out of 4. 17 points out of 30 on this particular practice test. All right?